Hello, and welcome to our podcast of Wraith the Oblivion. This is a variant story that accompanies Dirge of the Maniacal, a full chronicle that takes place in the world of darkness. I am your storyteller tonight, Miles Von Kamp, and with me is Holly Hofer, who will be playing as Millie, the Pardoner, and a free wraith at least for now. Good evening. Hello. Our sidewinding tale takes place on a Friday afternoon. It's hard to tell when you unlive in contrast to the twilight. But the date is November 4th, 1994. So let us begin our ghost story. Embrace the darkness. Beware the calmness. Rain. Seemingly endless amounts of rain. Pelleting against the haunt structure. A sense of bewilderment mixed with melancholy stirs the atmosphere. Although the desks, filing cabinets, and office chairs are all covered in permafrost, you remind yourself that you are standing in the Shadowlands, and nothing is what it should seem. Your olfactory instincts pick up on aged mildew and corrosive mold. Millie is becoming stir-crazy, youthfully impatient, somewhat curious about what is occurring outside this dreadful building. Boring, her shadow moaned obnoxiously. We should explore the area, leave our mark somewhere, maybe set up some stuff in case shit hits the fan. Millie feels an incessant urge to venture outside and check things out for herself. What would you like to do at this moment? Um, you take notice of a lot of the doors for this agency have been propped open, strangely enough. You're not exactly sure how they got the way they are currently, but for some reason, someone has caused all the doors of the haunt to be opened, which means you don't have to shift through any walls or shift through any doors damaging yourself as you go through. What would Millie like to do at this current moment? Well, first, I want to scold my shadow. I don't know where she picked up such language. <laughs> Your shadow will kind of feel like she's looking for any kind of excuse at this current moment, and as you kind of feel it against your scalp a little bit, she just kind of fixes her hair as if to tell a lie and says, well, you've been hanging out with all these, you know, brutish guys. They, they obviously are the ones who taught me such language. I mean, listen to them most of the time. They're mostly arguing. And, well, that older lady, she's okay. What is she again, a fortune teller? Oracle tells the future? Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean you have to swear. Okay, okay. I'll try not to swear for the rest of the day. Deal? Sure. Deal. Your shadow feels a little bit more complacent, like she just got away with something. Like a child that didn't eat their vegetables and hid it somewhere from the parent. Oh what would you like to do next, Millie? Explore, I suppose. Okay. Would you like to leave the uh, agency building and explore the outdoors? Sure. Okay. As you walk out the front door, outside the haunting grounds, Millie is greeted by the roaring wind filled with blustery, wind, with, uh, blustery rain. Oddly enough, these showers 
do not appear to be affecting your corpus, but instead passes through you like a plane flying inside a cloud after wandering in the rain for a few undisturbed minutes. You swear that you can hear a sound out in the distance. So what I need you to do now is to roll your perception and your awareness. Or you can also use your alertness. So whichever one is better, your alertness or your awareness, you may choose one of those two along with your perception. Let me know if you have any questions. So I would add those two together? Yep. And that'd be how many dice now? Yep. Right. What is your perception at? Um, five. Five? So you get five dice all right there. That also means that if you roll any tens, you can explode your tens for re-rolls. Okay. And then what, which one would you like to use? Your alertness or your awareness? Your awareness. That's right. four. And that's four. So you get a total of nine dice. The difficulty is going to be set at a six. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten are all successes. If you roll a ten, let me know. If you roll a one, let me know. Um, I did not get a one or a ten. Okay. Alright, so that is five successes. Um, with your heightened senses as a wraith, no problem whatsoever. You're able to hear through the rain and the blistering winds. Someone appears to be, or someone seems to be, humming to themselves. So as you kind of like listen in a little bit more and try to keep as quiet as you can with your shadow, you just hear this. Can I get closer? Yes, you can. So as the sound of the man's voice humming in a cyclical tune to himself continues, Millie makes your way closer and closer to where the sound is coming from. Eventually, you start to notice a very dim, purple glow emitting from what appears to be iron lanterns. You kind of... Millie follows up on her instincts a little bit and starts to go closer to this source <clears throat> that is making all this hubbub, all this faded commotion. And what you discover is a horseless carriage, a carriage without a horse. It's a big carriage wagon. It looks like it's made of maybe an older 19th century wood with large grains and colors that indicate a century's worth of seasons hanging by one of the entrance doors to this wagon are two very distinguishable iron lanterns that are lit with a very dim purple glow. Now what I need you to do right now, since you are a partner, somebody who uses the Castigate Arcanos, is I need you to roll your in intelligence plus your occult. So whatever your intelligence is at, Two. Two. And then your occult, which is also two? Yeah. All right, so four dice. Difficulty will be at a six. So six, seven, eight, nine, and ten are all successes. Your tens will not explode, though, so don't worry about that. If you roll any ones, let me know. Um, that would be two ones. Okay. <laughs> all right. And then any successes? No. Okay. <laughs> Would you like to spend any willpower? You can re-roll those two dice that didn't get you anything. Let's do that. All right. Hand me your sheet so I can take off <laughs> a point of willpower. And then I'm guessing you're just going to re-roll those two dice. Um, not the ones, but the ones that oh. didn't get you any successes. The ones still count. So 
So go ahead and reroll those two dice and let me know what you get. Remember, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten are successes. Oh, ten and a nine. Nice. So what that does is it cancels out both of those ones. Phew. And you are at a regular standing failure, which okay. means nothing bad happens. It just means that nothing comes to mind. So okay. you don't make a false judgment of what you are perceiving. Okay. Which is good. <laughs> so good job. Um, it was worth the willpower, in your personal opinion. When you see those iron lanterns, you remember when you were studying with your mentor <clears throat> that those iron lanterns mean something important. They have s something to do with wraith culture. Maybe some of the citizens that live in Stygia, but you can't really put it on the tip of your brain what it means, mm. but it's something very important. And unfortunately, you come up blank. Darn. So, what would you like to do next? Can I inspect the other side? You may. And where's so, this humming coming from? Is it's it coming from inside, inside of course it is. the carriage wagon itself. And it hasn't stopped. Even with you approaching, it just continues on. Just the... Is it a familiar <laughs> tune or just <laughs> random notes? <laughs> random notes. But about... You kind of notice every ten seconds when he's done with his... This whatever song that he's come up with himself, he repeats it. Okay. And repeats it. So it's the same humming every 10 seconds, the same song or tune, yes. but it's nothing familiar. It seems to be something out of his own mind, and it hasn't changed ever since you've shown up. So Not creepy at all. Not at all. So you go to the other side of the wagon, and you're kind of inspecting, you know, what's going on with this strange mode of transportation that's just showed up in front of you. And I'm guessing this is from the Shadowlands. You are currently in the Shadowlands, correct? Okay. And you kind of like, as you're examining this wagon, you can say to yourself, that is definitely in the Shadowlands. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no mortal being can see this wagon from where it is right now. Just wanted Let's look to at clarify. It. Oh, absolutely. I'm glad that you did. So on the other side of this wagon, you start to notice all along the structure of the carriage, Millie can see etched and inscribed symbols, runes, and religious icons littered haphazardously all along the wood. Would you like to roll your intelligence plus your occult again to see if maybe some of these symbols mean anything to you? That's four dice. Oh, yes. All right. Difficulty is again a six. All right. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two successes. Nice. So, Millie is able to identify at least two of the symbols on there. Clearly, one of them is the Christian cross. You know, and as you're kind of like looking at it being etched there very prominently, you kind of think to yourself, huh, maybe it's being, it's on there to kind of ward something away, kind of like they do in those movies that I saw where they hold a cross up to, you know, ward a spirit back or ward something back away from them. Demon. Yes, back demon. But then you kind of look at one of the other symbols and you notice, you know, hmm, that looks like something of like a Celtic knot. Except it looks a little bit more kind of sharp. You know, usually Celtic knots are very, very angular and circular. But this Celtic knot looks very, very estranged and looks very, very like fierce. And again, you get that sense of like, this is like a ward. It's something that's kind of giving that sense of stay back or keep away. So as you just kind of explore a few of these symbols, they clearly are being used as a ward or protection against 
supernatural or unnatural forces. But strangely enough, you as a wraith are not affected by any of these runes or icons, and it doesn't really resonate with you. Nothing, nothing is pushing you away. Nothing is keeping you from getting closer to examine this wagon. And the humming continues as you explore this. Would I be able to kind of gauge whether I get like a a negative vibe? Ooh by, you know, examining anything closer. Let's see here. I may not be affected by the wards, but I definitely mm. don't want to come closer if right? it feels like something's wrong or off. Something wants to keep me away. <laughs> okay. No, that's good. I like that. So what I'd like you to do this time is, do you have any enigmas under knowledge do you have any enigmas i do how many how many dots do you have in i'm at enigmas? three you're at three i want you to combine that with your intelligence so intelligence plus enigmas can use perception you can use your perception yes. it'll, it'll give you different results but you may that's what i want all right <laughs> what's your perception at five yes so you can explode your tens if you roll any tens so that'll be a total of Eight dice. Go ahead. Let me know if you roll any ones. And what was the um, difficulty? Difficulty is at a six at this point. So, okay. Still at a six. Yep, nothing has changed. How'd you do? Let's see. Uh -huh. Oh, wait, ones are bad. Right? Ones are bad. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then six, seven, eight, nine, and ten are good. So I've got four. Four successes mm -hmm. and two Two ones. ones. So you will have two successes. Okay, not bad. That's not bad at all. So, you take a moment and you just kind of, Millie will sit down and just kind of like examine this wagon. Nothing is happening to um, involve you or profess any kind of uh, disdain for you being there at the moment. So you just take a moment and you just sit and you kind of examine this wagon that's sitting there with the humming, the incessant humming that's occurring. Then you start to remember some things about those, those um, very, very familiar looking lanterns that are outside of the wagon as you just stare at them. And as you kind of explore back into your memories of Stygian society, you remember that these lanterns are part of a Stygian trademark, and it affiliates itself with partners. That's what you are. Oh. So this is a partner who specializes in castigate Arcanos, and these specific partners would position their lanterns outside of their place of business, light their lanterns when they are available to sell their services, and perhaps even teach other partners whom they feel that they resonate with on a spiritual, sometimes religious fashion. That's so you kind of get a sense of what could be inside this wagon and who's humming. Maybe a fellow partner. Maybe that's why they have their lantern to lift. But you still don't throw cautious, caution to the wind. And your shadow kind of leans in a little bit as you stare at this wagon and says, mm, there's something odd. There's something off. Usually with partners, they usually choose one particular like spiritual pathway, or they choose one religious pathway, or for you, you chose well, who you are right now. You believe what you believe. 
you are what you are, and you believe that shadows and other shadows besides me deserve a chance to commingle, right? Mm -hmm. That we can work together, you and I. Of course. So, my concern is why does this wagon have so many different symbols on it? Why does it have so many? Why doesn't it just have one? Maybe they're well-traveled. Maybe you're right. I guess there's only one way to find out, huh? Your shadow just kind of settles itself again. What would you like to do? The rain continues to fall. The humming continues to... I think I'll go back to the uh, other side where the lanterns were and maybe give a little knock. Give a little knock. All right. So, the humming doesn't stop, even as you knock. <laughs> I'm on the right page for you. All right. As you knock at the carriage door, You'll be greeted by a voice from inside that is gruff, somewhat poetic, and deep. Good morrow, worthy visitor. Come forth and enter. The doorway is quite unlocked, he'll say. There is. There seems to be a door for entrance. Okay. A few wooden steps just leading up to that door. Okay, I'll poke inside. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You open the door, kind of poke your head inside. It's very dark in here. Just please close the door behind you so no specters can make their way inside this safe place. You go all the way inside and shut the door behind you. I, I can't see inside. No, oh, it's pretty dark in there. You get a sense that there are some objects definitely inside there, and there's definitely a presence in there speaking to you, but you have to walk all the way in in order to fully invest yourself in the person who's speaking to you. Do you have a light? I do have a couple lights, yes. I will light them as soon as you shut the door. I don't want unwanted attention. I'll step in, I'll crack the door. All right. Almost closing it. That's Ready fine. to close it. <laughs> okay. So you not cut. quite close it. <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> so you leave the door open just to crack. But you kind of get the sense that you have shut it. There will be some lights, candles, that illuminate this wagon a little bit more so for you on the inside. Upon entering this old carriage, you will immediately see this ghastly presence sitting before you. Well, what's not ghastly in this world, am I right? That is very true. <laughs> That's a very good point, so maybe it doesn't affect you as much as you think it would. We don't, we don't want to just judge right off the bat. Right, right. We've all been through some tough times. We have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting upon a green, ash, swampwood chair is a darkly cloaked man with tattered clothes, browns and grays. His blistered and calloused hands appear to be a moonlight pale blue color, as well as his grotesque feet tapping on the floor methodically to his humming 
in his craft work. He's got two, like, two fingers, two thumbs, well, two fingers each hand, a thumb, and two toes. Seems a little <laughs> off, doesn't it? What is that stick on it? Is that a tongue? A very long tongue? I guess we'll find out. Okay. The workshop desk in front of him appears to be made of the same green ash tree wood as the chair he sits upon. And on that desk, along with his feverishly moving hands, Millie will see a death mask that this character is currently creating and detailing using the whittling tools that are at his disposal. still kind of dimly lit in here. You can hear the jingling of chains and other objects that are inside this wagon, but you can't really tell because of just the dim light that is going on from these candles. But you can now, like I said earlier, see his desk in front of him. You can see him whittling. His left hand appears to be carving out this death mask on the table. His right hand is dipping into some kind of black ink and spreading it across the mask. Mm -hmm. Double the work just for one mask. And he continues to hum. You get a sense that maybe there's a face underneath that cloak. But you'd have to get closer. Well, I would hope so. <laughs> get much closer if you want to see his face. I don't know about that, though. Okay. So you maybe keep your distance a little oh, yeah. bit. Very cautiously. Mm -hmm. Can I use, like, my awareness to kind of gauge the situation again? Sure. So perception is at five, I believe. Yeah. And then you said your awareness, yeah. so the supernatural. What's that at? Um, four. Four? So nine dice. Uh, the difficulty is still just at a six. You're still trying to figure things out. Maybe um, see how my shadow activity is. You know if it's kind of okay. Let's see what happens. Quickly and like I don't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> my shadow saying that. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. Ten. Roll any tens? I got a ten and a one. Okay. Uh, Reroll your ten one more time. Oops. That's that's one automatic success for the ten. Okay. Let's see if you can get another one. How'd you do? No. Okay. So one. So you got a ten and a one. Yeah. So they cancel each other out, and you are just right. you're left <laughs> completely flat with no right. successes. So as so many dice. So. <laughs> as your perception starts to kind of take in the surroundings more. It's, it starts to adjust to the little amount of light that you're allowed inside of this wagon. You get a sense that this character is a hoarder, or maybe an impulsive collector. Inside this dank place, there are piles of constructed masks of different shapes and different sizes, colors, and styles. There are several sets of whittling tools, colored paints and brushes, as well as random piles of clothing and clothes. Millie will also notice the long tubular breathing apparatus connecting to this character's neck that runs all the way to a medical machine about the size of a large sewing machine. It does not appear to be working or operating in any shape or form. Would you like to roll your in perception and investigation on this machine that doesn't work? Sure. Go ahead. That's a five, I believe. And what is your investigation? Three? Um, wait. Sorry, what? Investigation's uh, two. Okay, so seven dice total. And ten tens do explode. I'm guessing maybe this could be like a fetter or something. Ooh. Find out. Ooh, uh, How'd you 
do? I've got two tens. Nice. And a seven. All right, that's three successes. You may re-roll two more dice, see if you can get some more successes. Ooh, I got one more success and another ten. All right, go ahead. Keep rolling that ten. A one. <laughs> no worries, that means nothing happens. Okay. So that's a total of five, if I'm correct. Five successes. So, as you notice this setup, Millie will notice that the insides of the carriage have a very peculiar shaping of the metalwork curved and molded to fortify the insides of this wagon. It would seem that this metal was formerly intended to imprison and contain the people cont that were kept inside or within it. Similar to a prisoner or a jail van used to transport criminals. The metal inside the carriage has been reshaped and repurposed to decorate the insides as something fashionable choice, adding to its gothic atmosphere. But this does captivate your thoughts. So, there's that. Definitely still keeping my distance. <laughs> Your shadow says, I don't get a sense on this guy whatsoever, but if he's a partner, I'd be curious to find out why his hands aren't as inky black as yours are. That is our calling card, isn't it? Is it? Let's find out more. <laughs> character will look at you as he's humming to himself and whittling and working on his ma his death mask that's in front of him. Hello, my child. Hello. Good afternoon, I believe it is. Something I lose like track that. of time with my work sometimes. My name is Nosk, the Pardoner. I'm Millie. Hello, Millie. You might be wondering what I'm doing all the way out here. Sure. <laughs> well, Millie, I exist to make masks for the hierarchy. In particular, the Gaunt Legion. Out of curiosity, because <laughs> I may, I must ask, are you a legionnaire? Are you part of the Gaunt Legion? I'm just biding my time for now. Hmm. Out of game, um, you will know that Millie does have a connection who um, happened to be a former member yeah. of the Legion yep. and uh, defected only recently. Yep. This character doesn't look very, you know, explorative on those kinds of things. Yep. He seems very, maybe stays to himself, you know, stays in his own place. So if you were to use a little bit of that influence, maybe throw a name here and there, maybe the purpose that you have with that character, um, it might allow you to roll those three dice that you have in your contacts, okay. or your uh, mentor, sorry, your mentor, so, and persuade way. this guy to continue speaking with you. Because right now he seems very wary, okay. and you get a sense that if you say that you don't work with the Legion, if you don't work with the Hierarchy or the Legions, um, he may be dismissive and tell you to leave. Because... He was very, very forward with what he so stating, was expecting to work with. So I, I wouldn't feel like I'd be endangering myself by mentioning, by name dropping nope. that name? Nope. In fact, there's a possibility that he may recognize who you're talking about because of his dealings with uh, members of the Gaunt Legion. So we'll go back into the conversation. Okay. I'm interested in your... Uh, 
your position currently. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit more for me? Be very helpful on whether we can continue our conversation or not, young Millie. Um, well, my, my friend Cirrus um, has worked with them as well. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Hmm. And he seems to kind of stroke the apparatus that's underneath his neck for a moment. I need you to roll three dice for me. Um, difficulty will be a five. Dropping the name. <laughs> yes. And let's see if I... Let's see what happens. Mm, you said five? The difficulty is a five. Okay. So five and above is a success. Right, I got two successes and a one. So oh, one. nice. So. He will look at you for a moment. Kind of get lost in his thoughts. You'll notice that his left and right hand, as they were working on the mask, stop for a moment, just for a brief period, and then they continue going again. He says, "Oh yes, Cirrus, Cirrus, the uh, the usurer, the one who uh, measures and determines the worthiness of infants that are brought to him, and they decide what." use they have on the inside. Yeah, that's the one. Yes. I have not been to that necropolis in a long time. However, Cirrus happens to be someone that I fondly remember. And you say that he is your mentor? Yeah. Very good, very good. I think that we can continue this relationship then, Millie. I'm, I'm glad to have you here. Please, have a seat. And he kind of gestures to a stool that is in front of his desk. Um, and he seems more friendlier than he was a few moments ago, now that he's kind of learned a little bit of your background. Thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Do you take a seat on the stool? Sure, I will. All right. Take a so. few steps. And... <laughs> so. When you sit down, and you become a little bit closer to this partner, you start to notice a few extra details. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, uh. So, you will peer through the darkness that is covering his face because of his cloak, and you will see the abysmal death mask that he wears. Okay. Lovely. Lovely. There seems to be a dripping black mm -hmm. miasmal fluid that reminds Millie of her own black stained hands as a fellow partner. And he doesn't seem to mind this as he works. Continues to just drip off his face, and he just keeps using whatever it is that comes off of his death mask as ink. And continues to create these death masks on his desk before him, but again, seems very friendly towards you now, and just continues to work in front of you. Can I, uh, now that I'm closer, try and see if I can get another read off of them? Sure. What would you like to use? Your, uh... You want to use your perception again? Sure. Okay, and then uh, you wanted to use awareness again, correct? Sure. Okay, and your shadow will kind of lean in too and say, yeah. <laughs> would you like some help, or are you okay? I think I'm okay. All right, let me know. I can give you a little bit of an assist. I'm not needed right now, but thank <laughs> you. You're welcome. All right, so that's... Nine. Nine dice. Difficulty at this point is a five. You've lowered the difficulty because of his guard is going down a little bit. So five or above, tens explode. Ooh, we've got some good numbers here. Good. Out. 
goodness me. Alright, so I've got seven successes. No, <laughs> oh, wow. And two of them were tens, nice. but should we just say Hmm? Two of them were tens. Okay. Uh re-roll those tens. Let's okay. go more than seven. Alright, I'm gonna like not even He's not even going to need a mask by the time I'm done reading him. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get a full reading on this guy. Uh, How'd you do? One and a six. Okay, the six counts. So it'll be a total of eight successes against this guy. You've got, he's absolutely comfortable enough to let you come close to him. It's almost like kind of sitting next to a fellow friend. And he's a partner, just like you are. So why wouldn't you be comfortable around him? Why wouldn't he be comfortable with you spending time with him? Okay. So, at this moment, your shadow takes a chance and kind of just examines this, this whole scenario happening, and examines his work, and examines everything that you've experienced up to this point, and kind of just kind of whispers to you, it's like, it seems like this guy is an honest worker, but again, I am usually very good at speaking to another shadow. There's nothing there to talk to. He is empty. He is a husk. And yet, he still drips of the black, dark matter from his face. So, I don't know how to communicate with somebody who has no shadow. And it's hard for me to determine that, but what I can tell you from, you know, what I've seen here in the Tempest and exploring with you, that this guy has discovered something big. And I don't think he's just a partner. I'm looking over there. If you take a look over there on the left, do you see those test tubes? Do you see those flasks? Do you see those um, materials and devices? He's a chemist. I think he may have another use of Arcanos that he doesn't talk to others about. I think that chemistry set there in the corner isn't meant to be seen by people who just wander in here so he might provide services that no one else is capable of doing. Maybe a forbidden art that Stygian society has forbidden a long time ago. But again, I'd be really cautious around this one because uh, the only people that I've encountered who don't have a shadow that I can talk to have already been devoured by their own shadow. Hmm. So, I hope this helps. And your shadow continues to stare and study more. What are you working on? Oh, oh! No, of course you may, of course you may. It's good to have your company here. Uh, right now I'm just working on a, an idea that popped into my head. This uh, death mask that um, I think would really benefit someone, really, really benefit somebody who uh, doesn't want to be detected or seen. You know, someone who can kind of blend in with the shadows around them and kind of go against that, uh, um, I, the way that I saw this, you, you know how light comes in on a, uh, a window, uh, what are those things called? The, uh, um, the, uh, the shades, you know, you can turn the knob and cause the shades to open and close. I was visualizing, you know, light coming through that and, uh, the, how the shadow has become this, like, very kind of stacked boxy type of shape and and I want to design this this death mask to kind of emulate that and cause someone to just blend in with the night shadows okay. really interests me right now and I'm almost done I'm almost complete
But um, I have so many ideas racing through my head right now. You have a very interesting mask, my dear. May I ask you what inspired it? Tell me more about your own death mask. I, I haven't seen many like it. It's very colorful. That's precisely why I wanted to make it like this. Hmm. You don't see that much around here. Well, tell me I wanted it's... to add some color to this world, I suppose. Oh, very good. We could use more color around here, that is for sure. Um, but tell me, every mask has its story. Every mask has its own pathway that it brings up. What is the story of your mask? What is its pathway so far? Tell me more. He just continues to work and whittle and paint at this. In the meantime, his face seems to be staring right at you as he works. So he's doing three things at the same time. <laughs> it's very confusing. <laughs> well, that's exactly it. It's my own. And I feel like it was just a way to, for me to express myself here. Mm -hmm. oh. Very good, Nothing very good. Nothing else seemed to, to quite fit me. Hmm. Well, maybe I should tell you a little about what I do here, inside this lonely wagon of mine. In case you wish to... to hmm? I would love to hear it. Of course. In case you wish to purchase any of my services, you know, somewhere down the line. So... I work strictly with the hierarchy. Currently we are in the Gaunt Legion's territory, so I work especially with the Gaunt Legion. Because Cirrus is such a hard worker for the Gaunt Legion itself, then you are in the right place and at the right time. <laughs> so, let me be very, very forward with you. The masks that I make they have special properties to them. I've been experimenting on them for some time now. And, well, the hierarchy has used me to, well, do what we do as partners. Help alleviate the work of shadows with other wraiths, you know, as they are starting to become um, closer to oblivion. We have to push back the shadow as much as we can. And, well, I've found that there are other pathways that interest me more than just working with the shadows of others. That is, that is easy table play for me. But death masks, death masks, as you can see from my pile over here, I, I love making death masks and with their own individual uses and needs. Unfortunately, it also requires a little bit of the essence from the wearer itself in order to, well, create the full effects, if that makes any sense. Each of these masks is made individually for each person, of course. I wouldn't want it to fall into the wrong hands and be used against Stygia. So, that is one of the things that I can offer you. Um, what are your thoughts on that? It sounds very useful and helpful to the wearers. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Not many um, appreciate these types of skills and artwork. They um, see it as a, a waste of time or sometimes meant for those higher in station, if you catch my drift. The uh, Death Lords, even Lord Charon himself, would wear very, very formidable and ghastly masks to put people in their place. Maybe even scare some of those few who see them for the first time. Why can't we do the same? Why can't we have masks that maybe don't deem that kind of station as an emperor or a Anacreon, but instead show you as a formidable warrior, a strong pardoner, or a friend, 
or a friend, as your mask seems to emanate from me. So, that is one of the things that I can supply to you. Can you tell me about some of your perhaps favorite masks that you've made? Oh, oh my goodness. I could go on and on, but um, most recently, I made a mask for a customer. Let's say it allowed them to see exactly what they wanted to see in that moment. Mm -hmm. So you would wear this mask and the shape would change itself in accordance to the individual across from them. So if it is just, let's say, a friendly legionnaire, the one wearing the mask would appear to be another friendly legionnaire. Mm. If it was a heretic, the mask would reshape itself to that following that the heretic feels called upon. If it was a renegade looking to tear some place down, the mask would reshape itself into that person's, well, mm. interests. I myself do not have much favor for the heretics or the renegades themselves, but the hierarchy, uh, well, let's just say I serve the hierarchy and them alone. I can't just take any free wraith wandering off the street that walks in here. Of course. Yes. But yes, that mask was made, um, I would say, oh, time is so fluid in here. Maybe four months ago. So. So specific. Yes. <laughs> I am very, very specific on the amount of time that I spend with I had my mask. hand over my... <laughs> <laughs> Noted, thank you. That was so. for the listeners. No worries. <laughs> What else I can do, as a fellow partner, I will assist you and any of your friends of the hierarchy with um, your shadow that you might be struggling with currently. Mm. I'd like to see the shadow as something not to be... Uh, reshaped or remolded to something less fierce. I, I dare say the shadow should be allowed to be what it is. But we do need to have a nice balance in between, too. Hmm. And it may take years, years, to find that right balance. If you catch my drift. It's not something that can be mastered over a period of days. Mm -hmm. So what kinds of prices do you charge? I assume it's different oh, yes. in every case. Oh yes, everything everything has a cost, everything has a price. Um, well, if you are a hierarchy, I offer a very discounted price. Um, I am very, very gifted in the Arcanos of Castigate, and I would gladly help you temper your shadow at a very decreased price. Only a few obelai here or there. And what of a mask? Well, if you want a brand new mask, um, we're looking around the price of, say, a hundred obelai. Mm -hmm. If you're looking to reshape your own mask, let's say you want to have something especially done to it, um, probably somewhere around 50. 50 obelai will get you a fixed max, or something uh, a little bit more gifted. Okay. Allows you to do things especially so, that maybe you can't do without your death mask. I like to experiment. That sounds fair. Mm -hmm. 
But um, otherwise, I'm always just open to whatever it is that my clientele is interested in at the current moments. Was there something that you were looking for in particular? I was just curious, actually. Okay. As some time passes and you kind of have a trade-off conversation, you kind of get a sense that there is another entity in this wagon. You don't want to break the friendship that you already have going on right here to kind of seem off and maybe ask about something like that. You kind of get a sense that it's there for a reason. Kind of like that fly on the wall that inspects and watches and observes cautiously, maybe like some kind of protector. But you do get a sense that there is another presence in this wagon. Maybe this is kind of the answer to what your shadow was whispering, whispering about earlier and telling you, hey, something's off. Where's this character, you know, where's this character's shadow? What's going on here? So. Can I use maybe perception and enigma? Yes. To see if I can figure out maybe where it's yeah where it is where it's maybe hiding more of like what it could be. Yes, you may. All right. Go ahead and roll. Um, I believe that's what five and five and enigmas eight. is that total. Okay. Eight total sounds good. Is it, still it is a five. five. His guard has gone down slightly. Okay. So that would be four successes. Nice. So, a couple things that you start to notice in the room as you have this pleasant conversation with Nosk. The apparatus around his neck, this breathing device, goes down to the machine. And the machine looks like it also connects and maybe is plugged in <laughs> somewhere. However, these are the Shadowlands. You don't need to plug anything really in. Everything is done with the energies that you already have. So you already notice that his breathing device, this machine, is not operating. It's not working currently. It just sits there. But the tubes and the cord where the electricity would be coming from seems to go towards a pile of clothes and seems to sit there. Mm. And you get this very, like, strong... Your shadow gives you this strong sense of, like, danger as well as, like, kind of like you would a porcupine. It's like the closer you come to that pile of clothing, the more those spines start to unfurl and get sharper. But at the moment, you just kind of take a, you take a mental note of, like, there's something there. There's something in there. Watching. And whether that fills you with bewilderment or confusion is up to you. But um, you do kind of, like, make a mental note of that. And it unsettles you a little bit. But not enough to interrupt your conversation with Nosk. So... Did you have any more questions for me? Or maybe there's something that I can do for you currently. Would you like me to make some improvements on your current mask? I'll have to consider it. Oh, please do. Please do. And, um... I'll tell you what. You're the... You're the closest friendly person that I've had come in here in a very long time. Most people are all business. They're all about, you know, getting the wares and trading the obelai or making a trade with me. I'll cut you a deal. I can work on your mask for you. Make it a smaller price, you know, considering your uh, kindness towards me. We'll reduce that to 10 obelai. 
give it some consideration. Bring me your ten albuli, and I will happily work on your mask for you. And uh, we can enhance it next time you wear it. I appreciate that. Absolutely. This deal is only for you, though. If you were to uh, wander in here with um, a friend of yours and expect the same kind of treatment, um, just know that that deal is only meant for you, and I will deny of it. Course. I wouldn't expect such a thing. Of course, of course. You seem like you have a couple questions on your face that you want to ask, but at the same time, you don't seem, and his mask kind of like drips even more <laughs> abysmal blackness from its eye sockets. You seem to not want to ask those questions. Maybe out of fear that you may offend me. <laughs> My child, feel free to be honest around me. I will not be offended. And you kind of don't know what to make out of that. Your shadow kind of quivers a little bit when he speaks that way. Well, I suppose when you put it that way, I was just curious about your apparatus, I suppose. Oh! I don't see much of <laughs> that kind of thing in these lands. Of course, of course. And he kind of grabs the, um, the breathing device around his neck and then kind of like pulls and tugs on the, uh, the tube a little delicately, but at the same time more sentimentally. Like it means something to him, but may not mean the same thing to you. And he says, well, <laughs> a lot of us carry over some of the devices and older pieces of us that, uh, define who we are. And, um, Let's just say that um, I had a very dangerous past. I experimented a lot. I did a lot of, uh, well, a lot of work with chemicals that maybe shouldn't have been mixed together. And, uh, well, it destroyed my body more and more and more as I continued to experiment eventually leading to a degradation of my entire body. I believe that is how I have come to how I am now here in these Shadowlands. But thank you for asking. That is very perceptive of you. I haven't had someone ask a question about that in <laughs> decades. And as he says decades, you get the sense that this guy is very old. And maybe he was a partner for Stygian culture for a very long time and has a lot of knowledge. And you kind of also get a sense that he may be treating you almost like a child who's like first learning about this. And maybe you are, but you kind of get a sense that that's a safe place to be. And by asking your question, you haven't offended him, but he just speaks earnestly to it. What would Millie like to do? If you would like to leave your uh, death mask with me now, I can get started early and uh, you can pay me later. But then you would be without your death mask for, um, well, until you pay me. Since it's so beautiful the way it is, I wouldn't want to change very much. Thank you. Maybe add a little bit of blacks and grays, but nothing that would change the <laughs> beautiful nature that it has. So Millie, what would you like to do? I don't think I have any money. Much money. You don't. You kind of like 
tap your pockets for a moment and go like, Ooh, yeah, I don't have any money at the moment, so that would probably be a bad decision to make at this current moment. I would consider it. Mm, please Honestly, do. Honestly, I saw your beautiful part and was intrigued yes, yes. by the different symbols and mm. nature of it. Oh. Maybe you could do me a favor then, Millie, if you could. What's that? You might notice that I don't have a uh, beast of burden to pull my wagon anywhere. If you would uh, use those young eyes of yours to discover or find a uh, such a creature, a horse, I think fire steeds are more common out here. They're also called nightmares. The horses with uh, flames that come from their nostrils yes. and their mouths. Nasty creatures. Fascinating. And just the perfect creature to help pull my wagon onto its next destination. If you were to find one of these Maybe you could bring it towards me, or at least let me know that you saw one. Gives me a little bit of hope that I could move on to the next location. Of course, I'll see what I can do. Your shadow kind of takes a moment and like kind of whispers to you. It's interesting that he can't just leave on his own accord and find the fire steed for himself. Less. Do you think those symbols on the outside of this wagon are meant to keep him in here? What do you think, though? Mm. <laughs> and the shadow just kind of. Spoopy. The shadow just kind of sinks back in. <laughs> Give it some consideration, if you will. Yeah. And he just continues working at his desk. I take it Millie will probably leave at this moment? Mm -hmm. Thank you for the conversation and the offer, and I will greatly consider it. Absolutely. See what I can do for you. Give it some thoughts. Those numbers will remain the same. Even if you come back, I won't forget your death mask, that is for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And if you have more friends who are also members of the hierarchy, mm -hmm. the Gaunt Legion, it would be nice to have more customers, so feel free to bring them in. But I will also task upon them similar questions to yourself. Mm -hmm. The hierarchy and I go way back, so it would be unwise to bring a renegade in here hoping to get some free services from me. I understand. If you catch my drift. And I think you do. You're a smart child. Ah. Anyway. Be at peace. Come back anytime, even if it's for conversation. I'll be working on my masks. Thank you. He gets back to his work. I'll leave you to it. As you leave this wagon, you still get a sense that that presence underneath the pile of clothing is still watching you as you leave, every footstep that you take. And maybe has a sense that, I wonder if she noticed me. I wonder if she knows what's going on inside this wagon, the real mystery behind this wagon. But it's too late. You already put your hand on the doorknob. Still loose, hasn't closed opens up nice and properly. Millie is able to captivate all the information that she's gathered and you are able to share it with your circle as you see fit. If Millie has impressed anyone, it would be Nosk. He seems very interested in you, especially working with you in the future. And might give you that discount that he mentioned. The Helena Reigns 
have withered into a misty trickle. Millie feels that she has educated herself vastly, even though many factors are still draped in mystery. The smell of charcoal and heated coals fill the air, reminding Millie of where her haunt is located in the Shadowlands. Your passion of discovering the undiscovered seems to be more than fulfilled by this exploration. Millie walks a very quiet pathway down the city blocks, fond memories of being able to jump puddles and splash the water with your feet. These flood your thoughts, but they are only passing. In all reality, you are the walking undead whose simple design is to find new meaning in the underworld, to survive and not be led astray. And if any of your actions leave small figments on the skin lands for breathing mortals to find, so be it. This unlife is yours.